So plastics and the environment. Let's look at all of the different things we know about plastics and the environment. Here is a common thing that we hear all the time that we're using 500 million straws a day. And this, you have to remember these things we hear are not necessarily true. They're just rumors on the internet. So somebody gets paid marketing dollars for you to click on these headlines. So somebody said that there were 500 million straws used each day in America. And this was repeated by USA Today, CNN, The Washington Post, The Wall Street Journal, Fox News, and even The New York Times. And where did this information come from? It came from a nine-year-old boy called Milo Kress, who was doing a school project. He made a couple of phone calls, came up with a number, and all of these journalists happily repeated this number, which, and there's no evidence. There's no record of these phone calls. There's no supporting evidence. And when you do go to check, this number, it's actually wrong. It's nowhere close to the real number. So here's an example of where people are happy to take any information and if it sounds exciting, they publish it. And there are many, many cases of this happening and you're gonna see some of them in this talk. So we have to remember, all of us know that the things we hear on the internet are probably not true, but we have to remember that and we have to say, okay, although I've heard this thing a bunch of times, let me spend a few minutes and go and see what the scientists have to say because it might not be the same. So people are willing to believe nonsense if it sounds good. And that's a problem because everyone does believe a load of nonsense right now. So the first question to ask is what is green? Everyone's telling you things should be recyclable, they should be sustainable, they should be natural, but what is green? How do we know? Most people are just trying to sell you their product and they don't really care what is green. Or if they do care, they don't have any evidence for what is green. And there is only one way in the world to know what is green and that is called a life cycle analysis. So nothing's perfect, but this is standardized. There are ASTM and ISO standards to tell you how to do a life cycle analysis. And when you've done it, experts have to check it to make sure that you didn't cheat, right? So um, there's always some room for negotiation, but there are a lot of life cycle analyses now. They cost, they cost money to do, but governments rely on them, companies rely on them, and even Greenpeace relies on them. This is the only accepted way in the world to tell what is green. So what you do is you add up all of the components of an article. What are the raw materials used to make them? How much energy was used to make them? How much carbon dioxide was used to make the raw materials? How much carbon dioxide and energy and pollution were used in the manufacturing process? How much transportation was there? and distribution. And what about use of the material? If, for example, you might have a piece of plastic in a car, which takes some oil to make the plastic, but if you make the car lighter, you might save 100 times that amount of oil because the car is lighter and you get more mileage from your car. So you have to consider every single effect, including waste and recycling at the end. So uh, everything is considered and you have maybe 15 different uh, components here, and then you look to see what is green, what wins, right? So there's no perfect material. We can either go and live in a cave and give away our modern lifestyle, which is one option. I don't see anyone doing that. So as we want to have our modern lifestyle and our cell phones and our computers, we have to pick the materials which have the least impact. So we look at all of these 15 or 18 different factors, including pollution in water, everything, and we say, what's the greenest material overall? And that's the only way to really know the truth. So what do we find when we do that? Well, let's look at plastic bags because they're very famous, right? Grocery bags. And you can check this yourself, right? Everything I'm about to tell you, you can check. Go to Google and type in LCA or life cycle analysis grocery bag or shopping bag. And you will find PDFs from Denmark, from Canada, from America, from Australia, from I think Singapore was the, the latest one. There are 25 life cycle analyses on grocery bags and plastic bags come out to be the greenest one every time. 25 studies all over the world, plastic bags are greener than paper and cotton, easily. There's no question about it. So why are politicians banning them? Why are they putting taxes on something which we know with 100% certainty is the greenest solution? It's complete insanity. Um, I mean, there's just no question about it. I even sent all of these studies because I'm not a life cycle analysis expert. I sent them all to a life cycle analysis professional he looked at all of the studies and he made a, an official statement on his, from his company saying, yes, there's no question, plastic bags, the regular polyethylene bag is definitely the greenest. And then you will tell me, okay, there could be some litter of bags, but is there some magical thing that prevents somebody from dropping a paper bag? If we change from, paper to, from plastic to paper, are they not going to litter those bags? 
the litter problem will be exactly the same. So these arguments don't make sense. Or you could say, we don't recycle plastic enough, right? And that is true, but that's only one of 15 or 18 components in a life cycle analysis. Plastic is winning almost every category. It's lower energy, it's lower waste, it's lower carbon dioxide, it's lower water, right? So we have to not just focus on one component, we have to look at the whole picture and work out what is causing the least harm. And the answer is plastic bags. So that's surprising. I was surprised when I found that. And let's look at some numbers. Um, to replace plastic bags with paper bags, you would need about two and a half times more energy. You'd have about one and a half times more carbon dioxide and you would use 17 times more water. And if you wanted to replace them just in Europe, you would have to cut down 2 million more trees per year, every year, right? So this is just craziness. So let's look at the next thing. Everyone asks me, what about, um, this comes up every week on LinkedIn, in the newspapers, what is the best solution for soft drinks, right? So this has been studied too. We look at all the different factors um, and we see if we compare an aluminum can or a glass bottle or a PET bottle, we find out that the PET bottle uses way less energy, generates far less waste, even on a volume basis, and far, far less greenhouse gas. Right. So this argument that we should be using glass or aluminium because it's recyclable is a completely insane argument. What you're saying is let's pick the two most materials which cause the most harm and create that harm again and again and again. Every time you recycle these materials, you have to melt them at 2000 degrees in the case of glass. Right. You have to burn all of that energy again. You have to burn all that oil and the coal to make the electricity. You have to you're generating waste again you're generating greenhouse gas again. What kind of insanity is it to pick the two most harmful materials and cause harm, not one time, but five times or a hundred times? It's completely crazy, right? What we need to do is pick the greenest material for each case and then make sure that we recycle it, right? And, and try to reuse it if we can. So that's the answer. The answer is not to say plastic recycling rates right now are a little bit too low, Right, so we should use another material, which is 10 times worse. The, the solution is to pick the greenest material and recycle it more. And that's what people are doing right now. Okay, so let's look at the next um, slide. It's very hard to tell anything from one life cycle analysis. And that's why I found 25, right? Because I wanted to be really sure. That's what professional scientists do, but it's a heck of a lot of work to find 20. You try and do it. You see how long it takes you to find all 25 of those life cycle analyses. It will be days or weeks or never. So um, I've collected hundreds of these things. And when you look at them all together, you start to see a trend. So wood tends to be the greenest material. The trouble with wood is we can't make cell phones from wood. We can't make cars and airplanes or computers from wood. Um, it just doesn't work. So what's the next greenest material? And the answer is plastic. Plastic is very, very versatile and it's very, very green because it's processed at low temperatures. It uses low amounts of pollution, low amounts of oil and so forth. So uh, low amounts of energy, low amounts of carbon dioxide, as we already saw. So plastic is usually the greenest material. Sometimes paper wins. Um, so if you look at life cycle analyses of, of things where plastic or paper could be used, sometimes paper wins, but usually plastic wins. And if you look at an example like um, banknotes, uh, so if you have um, a banknote, they're made from polypropylene, many of them. So there's one polypropylene banknote printed every year per person on the planet, right? And the reason that they're used is that although it has about the same an environmental footprint as a, as a paper banknote, um, the plastic one lasts three times longer. So it weighs the same, it has about the same footprint per kilogram of banknotes, but it lasts three times longer than the paper one. So the plastic is greener because it lasts longer. And there are other cases like a grocery bag where the grocery bags made of paper in my supermarket are 60 grams and the paper one is six grams. So the paper one, although it has the same environmental footprint per kilogram of paper or plastic, the paper one weighs 10 times more. So it's generating 10 times more waste and it turns out to be much less green. So paper and plastic are close, but usually if the plastic weighs less or lasts longer, the plastic will win against paper or cardboard. Steel is not very green because you need a lot of energy to make it. Aluminium, you need to do a lot of mining and so forth. Aluminium is, is, is even worse and glass is probably the worst if you look at a lot, a lot of life cycle analyses. And as you see at the bottom here, there's some text and that's the proof for what I'm saying. So a real scientist when they talk gives proof. 
I see claims all the time from the World Wildlife Fund even saying plastics last 500 years. And I look on their webpage and I look and I look and there is zero proof. They're just making things up, right? There's, if there's no proof, if there's no science, then it's just garbage. It's just a rumor. Uh, so that's why real scientists support what they're saying with proof.